Our next story I kind of stumbled across when I was doing research on the conformers. And a couple of people have hit me up and said, hey, why don't you use the Wayback Machine to look for the information that's been deleted off of the um, websites talking about the conformers. I've done that a little bit. I haven't had anything conclusive yet, but I'll keep looking around. You know, I know that that one link from UFO Digest, I absolutely know that one link from UFO Digest, the reason why I bookmarked it, because it had information about the conformers. And when I went to pull it back up, it was gone. So that's the one I'm kind of focusing on the Wayback Machine, but I haven't found anything yet. So what we're going to talk about is another group of aliens. I had never heard of these guys, and it's a fascinating story. Whether or not it's true, it's a very interesting story. And what we're going to be talking about is the Starship Athena. Now, the Starship Athena is the reason why we don't have disclosure, and it's the reason why we haven't been invaded. And I think It's an interesting little puzzle piece to the alien story because it explains two things that people ask. If aliens are out there, why haven't we been invaded? If aliens out there, why hasn't the government acknowledged it? The Starship Athena is this starship that's positioned between Saturn and Jupiter. And it is the greatest starship in the galaxy. And that's half true. It is, but it's part of a fleet that is the greatest starships in the galaxy. These aliens are known as the the Arcturians. The Arcturians. These are a race of aliens that value spirituality above all else. They're not about material possessions. They're not about conquest. They're about lifting themselves up to a higher spiritual vibration so they can move between the third, fourth, and fifth dimension, whatever that means. I don't know. I'm not swallowing this all, but I mean, so that's what makes them different than, say, the greys and the reptilians. And their purpose is what they do is they protect lower species and try to evolve them to the level that they're at. They want people to kind of come to them. They're about free will. They're not about, they're not, they're, when they com- compare to the greys who like abduct people and the reptilians who supposedly eat people. The Arcturians are more like, we want you to come to us. And in the meantime, we'll protect you from all threats. So the reason why the Greys and the Reptilians haven't done a full-scale invasion of Earth is because they have this massive ship. I mean, they're basically the security guards of the Earth's gated community, in a sense. These guys, they're known for having their skins greenish, apparently. They have big eyes, three fingers, and they're telepathic. That sounds a lot like a gray, but they're different. They're a different race, apparently. And they just kind of sit there, and they will accept visitors from time to time. I mean, this is where the story gets a little ridiculous. So those initial initial things, I'm like, okay, you know, I can definitely see that. And then they, when people are sleeping, they take them up to their spaceship, their souls up to their spaceship, and repair their souls and all that stuff, and I don't know. I mean, once you start getting into kind of the weird mystical stuff, you kind of lose me. One thing I think is interesting is that, you know, I've talked before about how alien biology should be different than human biology because we've evolved on different planets. Now, when we talk about human spirituality versus alien spirituality, the gulf would be far more vast than the biological gulf. And here's why. Humans... The way, that we, the way that we're designed biologically is that we're, we are constantly given choices. We can indulge or withhold. We can eat eight cheeseburgers today and then we'll pay for it later on. Or we can withhold eating the eight cheeseburgers and we make that little sacrifice and we gain something, you know, being overall health. So every decision we make is something that we're either, it's all about, you know, we either withhold something or we indulge something. Going back and forth. You can say, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to play video games for two hours. I'm going to have a lot of fun. But after that two hours done, you're going to be like, oh man, I kind of like, I should have done, been more productive. We can withhold or we can indulge. And that's how our religions are set up for the most part. Our religions are about self-sacrifice. Almost every major religion is Don't do X now, you'll be rewarded in the afterlife. Don't indulge now, you'll be rewarded later. Indulge now, and you'll be punished. So we take our our religions are structured over how our biology is. 
Now, the Arcturians eat a, a formless goo, and they just meditate all the time. They live to be 500 years old, according to these. I like how I'm talking about it like I'm reading it out of an encyclopedia, but I think you see what I mean. So if they have a different structure, we have a limited lifespan on the planet Earth. It's a constant struggle between, you know, withhold, indulge, withhold, indulge. If we lived 500 years, that wouldn't be such an immediate thing. I know that if I over eight every single day, I will pay for it within six months to a year. Maybe maybe sooner. If I live to be 500 years old, that's stretching. So I, it's weird. Our religions are based on self-sacrifice. There's a few religions that aren't. Satanism comes to mind. Satanism is kind of about indulging. But for the most part, all of our major religions are based on withholding from doing things and then being rewarded later on. It's completely based on our biology. So I, I find it weird that any sort of alien spirituality would be compatible to us in any way. But apparently that's what these guys are all about. So so what's interesting about the story, like I said, I kind of stumbled across it, the Starship Athena, and I was I was like, this is this kind of fills in a couple gaps. Because again, why don't the aliens just invade us if their technology is so superior? And there's always been the answers like the answer I've always given is why would they? I said on a previous episode, we could invade Mexico. But what would we have to gain from it? We can invade the, invade the Philippines, but what would we have to gain from it? And that I kind of applied that to aliens. They're there. They're pre completely preventing an invasion. Any sort of invasion fleet would have to get past them, and because the ship is so advanced, it just would fail. So that kind of answers that question. If you believe in the existence of aliens coming from other planets or even from other dimensions, and these guys kind of fit into both narratives then it's there to stop that. But the second question, which I think is more interesting, is why, if aliens are real, why doesn't the government just do a disclosure for it? And the answer to that has always been, well, he, the U.S. government doesn't want to admit that there's aliens because then, one, they'd have to admit that we had known aliens were here before and that it would cause a huge panic and people would be like, oh my God, we're not the superior species on the planet. Blah, blah, blah. Why should I worship God? Why should I go to work? That probably would happen to a segment of society. And I think people would be fearful for quite a while because all of a sudden we're not the superior species. But, you know, the Vatican has it now. The Vatican has said, yeah, there's probably aliens. The Vatican actually has one of the best observatories on the planet. So this idea that we're still super irrational, we're, we're pretty irrational, but that were super irrational, mainstream religions have made a place for ETs in them because they're like, it's kind of going to, they figure mathematically there has to be something else out there. So that, that idea always doesn't wash. But so what the Starship Athena adds to that is the reason why the U.S. government can't admit that aliens exist is because not only have they known about them for a while, but the Arcturians... According to the story, Arcturians have contacted the United States government and said, we can help, or any government really, we can help your people. We can help humanity by lifting them up and helping them rise, evolve spiritually. And so they could also move through the ether and they could also journey into the fourth and the fifth dimension and they could just be healed and loved and they could just be evolved. And the greys are like, we can sell you weapons. And the U.S. military is more interested in buying the weapons than making a deal with the Arcturians. Not only would the U.S. government have to say, yes, since 1947, we've been in contact with aliens. And they could say, these are the greys. And then there's these reptilians over here, too. We've been in contact with them. And that's all the aliens we know about. And then the starship Athena shows up and says, hey, actually, the U.S. government's known about us far longer than any, any of them. We made them this offer. They refused it. All they wanted to do was buy weapons. So you couldn't disclose. You couldn't disclose because then the, the Arcturians would get involved and they'd say, hey, hey, what about us? It's not just the Greys and the Reptilians. We came here. We offered them spiritual enlightenment and they wanted weapons. Now, because the Arcturians don't want to, like I was saying, they're not about forcing evolution. Until we make, until we admit that there's aliens, they won't show themselves. But once we do, then they can say, yeah, you guys, 
you guys really messed up because we could have been solving these problems 50, 60 years ago. And they wanted to wage war instead. Do I believe any of that? Not really. I think it's a fascinating story. I think it's as believable of, as any UFO story I've heard. I mean, it is. It's not, you know, I, I've heard dumber UFO stuff. I think it fills in the gaps. I think it's an interesting story. And that's the thing, like, sometimes it's not about... This is going to sound funny, but sometimes it's not about whether or not it's 100% true. Sometimes it's about adding to the mythology. Sometimes it's about adding to the story. Adding to the overall mythos of the aliens. Because it fills in some valuable points. And it adds a bit of color to it. It adds this kind of silent guardian. This, I don't want to say dark knight. That's a little pretentious but you know this kind of this force that's kind of watching over us that's keeping us from being overtaken but not someone that we know on a day-to-day basis they're not hyped up in the movies they're not hyped up on x-files or anything like that so i think it's an interesting story if someone said jason would you bet money that these guys are real no of course not i wouldn't bet money on that any real ufo sighting was real even if i saw it myself i probably wouldn't bet money on it i'm more of a ghost guy than i am a ufo guy but I, I bet money that ghosts are real, actually. But but you, it, it, that's besides the point. My point is is that I think it's a, an interesting story. It's an interesting part of the mythos. And again, oh, and I do. I should say this too. Apparently, there's footage of the starship Athena being caught in a solar flare because they show this solar flare going off, and there's like a a black box, a kind of blocking part of it. It could be a fragment. It could be like a you know, pixelation, GIF error, things like that. I Again, I don't put so much stock in that. But who knows? Who, you know, who knows? I, I A lot of times I poo-poo this alien stuff. But, you know, who knows? Again, I think it's a fascinating story. And sometimes, you know, sometimes, like I said, you want to hear a good ghost story. And sometimes you want to have proof of ghosts. I think this falls more into the line of this is an interesting story about aliens than this is 100% proof of aliens. Because the truth of the matter is, we won't know until they make themselves known. Other than that, we can just have fun speculating. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.